Hi guys, welcome to YSCOM Driving. Alright guys, good morning, good morning. We are at the BHP station in Gombak, our regular push-off point and we are taking another vehicle up to Genting and this is a vehicle I have not driven before the first time I laid eyes on it was yesterday evening and this is none other than the GAC GS3 which is a B segment SUV so anyway let's get moving just pushing off from the BHP station and it's early in the morning 726 so guys the GAC is distributed by Warisan Tanchong and uh, this is a part of the Tanchong group and they are in uh, collaboration with GAC which is Kuang Chao Automotive Company yeah so it's one of the big companies in China and they made a million vehicles last year according to a report which I received and so it's not a small company here yeah? it's big and they have this lovely machine now what is it it's a SUV B segment front wheel drive it has a naturally aspirated 1.5 liter engine coupled to a six-speed automatic gearbox and that drives the front wheels this one feels like say, an electrical power steering I think it is and you get 17 inch wheels disc brakes all round front are ventilated so in terms of spec this vehicle is okay now looking at the engine bay I've seen it earlier there is space for a turbo so it's only a matter of time before this vehicle gets a turbo if there isn't already another one but uh, for Warisan Tanchong group they have brought in this 1.5 naturally aspirated it's a 16 valve double overhead cam with dual VVTi so it develops quite good power you get 113 PS and 150 Newton meters of torque so that's not too bad and uh, so we want to know how it will drive if you were to drive it normally now the speed limit on this highway is 90 but I think we can go a little bit faster and see how it feels okay with the six-speed gearbox taking off from the gas station was not a problem and now we're driving it at normal speeds huh? yeah we're a little bit above the speed limit but never mind uh, we are staying with the flow of traffic does it have enough power? Does it feel sluggish? No, it doesn't. So, if you drive it like a normal person drives it, it feels okay. Look at it. Okay, I'm accelerating, it shifts down and it pulls up. So, this is 1.5, 113 PS, and the performance is as expected. It is not to say underpowered yeah okay I notice it's got blind spot warning so it doesn't have the ADAS features but it does have your traction control your ESP and uh, your EBD hill start assist and hill descent control so it's got everything else except the autonomous braking yeah and it doesn't have lane departure warning yeah <laughs> Okay, so the, for the first part of this video, we're going to drive it at normal speeds and check out things like noise. Okay, so the cabin is not bad actually. Uh, you feel that it's very nice and secure. We actually sit quite high up and uh, you don't hear much of the engine or transmission. But what you do here are tyres, so these are 17 inch tyres, I suppose they're SUV tyres and basically what you hear is the road noise from the tyres. So is it obtrusive? Not really, 
this is a B segment vehicle so what do you expect all of them are <laughs> roughly at this level of sound in terms of size yes it is within the B segment plus or minus one or two mm here and there and it drives okay so the motor fuel consumption is 6.9 liters per 100 kilometers uh, that one we may or may not verify later but that is the mooted fuel consumption and under real world conditions you can get plus or minus uh, 30% yeah so I think if you drive it under our normal fuel consumption mode it's quite possible to hit that because I feel that the, there's enough torque and power to pull the car so very quickly 2000 rpm will give you about now let's see 2000 rpm is about 90 a little bit above 90 so you're looking at maybe 46 or 47 kilometers per 1000 rpm in top gear that's fine now we are driving in normal mode there is also uh, let's just see there's a button on the left here press the button and you're on eco mode now so on eco mode, well, normally what they do is they detune the car a little bit to give it more fuel efficiency and then your power feels a little bit lacking. Okay, so there's either eco or normal. So for today, we'll leave it at manual. Sorry. So for, for now, we'll leave it at uh, normal. And then there is also another one, which is... Uh, manual mode and okay I press the button again it goes to manual and I see I'm on M6 and then there's a little uh, button on the right hand side of the gear lever and you push at the back of the lever you get a downshift and if you push on the front part you get an upshift very rudimentary thing but it works so so instead of pushing the gear lever up and down is a button that you activate so we're going at 90 kilometers per hour we're in fourth gear fifth gear sixth gear yeah so the gap between fourth fifth and sixth is not a lot yeah it's, it's less than a thousand rpm per year so interesting okay you still need to accelerate to get a bit of power and then you shift up red lines at about 7000 rpm wow that's interesting so actually this engine seems to be quite well built i have no idea where is the origin i suppose it is china yeah they make a lot of 1.5 liter engines there guys we're supposed to drive it like normal okay let's just put it back into auto first okay this is d5 in normal mode it's in fifth gear so if you don't push it it goes to a, as high a gear as possible and it's actually quite decent to drive i think they have done a very good job with the gear ratios and in terms of handling it's not too bad uh, it sprung a little bit on the stiff side just remember this is a B segment vehicle yeah so they need to cater for the big increase in weight and talking of weight this uh, GS3 which is the model name of this GAC is uh, 1350 kilos so it's not light but I think within the range like, considering it's an SUV so you get 17 inch wheels McPherson struts in the front and torsion beam at the back okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to manual yes and we're going to use the manual yes and from here on we are getting near to the entrance to Gunting Highlands 
it is 7.35 in the morning so it should be quite clear today it's a weekday not a weekend so let's check out the car a little bit before we get to the start you forgot the gear shift is on the gear lever okay that's third gear it doesn't shift down if it's too fast so the DCU does control how much you can shift I think it's good it helps to protect the gearbox but it's not as much fun lah. you cannot shift down to get some engine braking so anyway we're in third gear pulling 5000 rpm check out the handling around this first right hander not too bad oh nice okay my impression of cars from china yes this car is from china it does feel as if it's quite solid so that means they are actually building cars much better now i i haven't turned off traction control so we just leave it on here okay third gear it won't shift down to second uh, now it goes into second when you're slow enough and it shifts up by itself that's to save the gearbox because I'm not used to the gear shift on the lever here we go a bit it's only a 1.5 guys you 
here is my back going back and forth. Thank you, just to let you know I'm there. the handling is quite good it's quite predictable and brakes still okay no issues yet ESP came up a couple of times but that just slows down the car
slow down for the bike because I didn't know whether he was going to change lane or not, but he didn't. Thank you very much. and slows me down a little bit midway through the corner but it's okay just a little bit okay i'm get, coming to grips with the s mode it is better to let it shift by itself using the throttle so when you want it to shift down you power more and if it can it will <clears throat> okay It takes a while to respond though. Yeah. 
or you got to lift off the pedal and power again. You just cannot step on the accelerator. Yeah, lift off and power. Then it changes down. <laughs> Learning how to drive this car. This is the final corner. <laughs> yes, we made it. <laughs> and uh, it's actually not bad considering there is only 1.5 liter. And uh, so for the normal day-to-day -day user, this uh, GS3 is excellent. Uh, I'll tell you what is the advantage of driving a 1.5 without a turbocharger you'll get very consistent fuel consumption uh, you won't get a lot of power but where it matters which is mostly on the flat and the normal driving conditions there is enough if you're climbing the hill if you take it slow it's fine but uh, you won't have a lot of power coming up the hill uh, although uh, we did come up here without any problems in a couple of places there was a bit of a bogging down but that's because the TCU is tuned slightly different from what I normally know of a TCU so in this one where there were a couple of times when I was like stuck in second gear or stuck in third gear that's because I had my foot on the throttle flat out but it wasn't responding so the way to get out of that situation is to lift off and power again then you shift down so from third you shift to second okay so all in all, I think this is a pretty nice car. It's decent and uh, the build quality is fine, very nice. Good visibility, high sitting position, seats are comfortable. And uh, what's the price? 95800 and I think it's 96800 and 105800. So the this is the higher spec one. 105,800 and uh, that is the price on the road without insurance lah. and the lower spec I don't know what are the difference in specs but it doesn't have a lot of the stuff and that is uh, 9,000 ringgit cheaper at 96,800 sun's in my eyes so anyway thanks for being with us for today and till we meet again in the next video bye bye